Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech Talk video, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the bus width and the memory bandwidth of GDDR5 memory. Now, this memory is found inside the PlayStation 4 and modern day graphics cards and it's actually quite fun to calculate this and I'm going to be using this as a platform for future videos to show you basically how memory works. This video we're going to be just discussing how to calculate it in a very simplistic way. Now as a slight aside before we really get into this I'm going to point out that I am actually producing a, uh, my own application. It's going to be freely available most likely on redgamingtech.com. It's currently the 23rd of August he says double checking 2013 so it's probably going to be about you know the end of this uh, month it's going to be available completely free. You guys can check that out and it'll give you a really easy calculator to work with. Now, as I said, this memory is found inside the PS4 and modern day GPUs, the higher end ones, and it produces very, very high amounts of bandwidth, which is very important for modern day graphics cards and or anything else that requires a hell of a lot of bandwidth to uh, process lots of functions simultaneously. In the case of the PlayStation 4, it has about 176 gigabytes per second, and on the 7970 GPU from once again AMD, that's 264 gigabytes per second. This is the theoretical maximum amount of uh, uh, bandwidth. So enough words, the peak performance in this, you know, um, perfect world kind of thing. Now, as it turns out, both the PS4 and the 7970, I'm just going to call it the Radeon for ease of pr uh, pronunciation, both utilize exactly the same speed RAM. They're both using memory that's 1375 megahertz or 5.5 uh, or 5500 um, megahertz effective. So why is there such a disparity between the actual memory bandwidth, you know, what gives if it's exactly the same speed? Well, we're going to be going into that and showing you how that works in just a moment. So the calculations for this are actually pretty simple. You'll notice that at, at, uh, on the specifications it says it's 1375 megahertz memory clock or uh, 5.5 or 5500 I'm sorry uh, megahertz effective. What the hell does effective mean? Well I will explain this f in the future a lot better but just for now just know that for every um, megahertz on actual you have to just times it by four because the memory is quad pumped so if you open a calculator where you're good at maths in your head you can just simply times 1375 megahertz and that will give you the 5500 megahertz um, effective. So once you've got that it's actually really easy to then figure out what the memory bandwidth. Let's use uh, the figure that you don't know what the memory bandwidth is but you know what the bus speed is and you know what the clock speed is. So what you would do then you would take the um, 5500 megahertz so in this case the effective memory bandwidth if you don't have the effective you take the actual clock speed so let's assume for example it's 1375 you would times that by 4 and then we know that the bus width of the 7970 is 384 bits. So I'll repeat that one more time, 384. So what you do, you take the 5500 and you times that by 384. And then you take that number and then you divide that by 8 because of the bits and bytes and blah blah blah, you guys know probably. Um, and then you'll come up with the actual figure which is 264,000 and obviously that goes right in to gigabytes per second so that's how we get the figure 264 GBS so what you could basically say is you can just ignore the last three numbers if you want and that's what your memory bandwidth is in terms of gigabytes per second okay smart ass so I hear you scream so what is the Bits that what's the actual bus width of the PlayStation 4? How do we know it's 256 bits rather than say 384? Well, it's actually fairly simple once you know how. So, in the case of the PlayStation 4, just for example, 
we know that it's 176 gigabytes per second. So if you guys open up your calculators or you can do it in your head or your phone or whatever, type in 176 and then three zeros, so 000. zero, zero. So once again, just to reiterate, 176, zero, zero, zero. Last time, do you remember how we divided by eight? Well, now we have to actually times by eight because of the bits and the bytes calculations, of course, uh, that go in to pretty much everything we have to worry about in terms of uh, size calculations. So if you times that by eight, and then you have to do a division, you have to divide it by 5,500 megahertz. Uh, that's, of course, the effective rate of GDDR5 memory on the PlayStation four and what figure pops up that's right 256 which means you've got a 256 bit bus now in this i'm also going to give you guys a very brief explanation of what the hell a bus width is because it's one of those things a lot of people aren't exactly sure about um because obviously there are so many different terminologies and someone floating about so all it basically means all the bus width actually means is how much data can simultaneously be transferred um, per clock down the wires, so to speak. So, for example, it could be 256 bits or 384 or whatever, depending on the width. And then you take that and then you times that by the clock speed and that's really how you get it. So hopefully that's answered a couple of questions from people and hopefully it's been a fairly entertaining video. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.